In the past few years, Apple want to make Pro a real pro. Hardware upgrade is the weight of it. From the smart audio which I don't really recommend, to the magic keyboard which you crave the trackpad. Starting from iPadOS 13, mouse and trackpad is supported. I think that's something they should have done much earlier. No matter is the mouse or trackpad, the biggest benefit is you don't have to lift up your hand anymore when typing. And once you get used to trackpad, the super smooth experience makes no one wants to go back to mouse. But there's also a big problem though. Expensive. $299 for small one and $349 for big one. That's enough to buy a new iPad. Is this keyboard made by gold? And it's not that much good. The first impression is heavy. No wonder they don't mention the weight. 11 inch version around 600 gram. 12.9, 685 gram. It weighs nearly the same with the iPad Pro. Put it on, that's very close to a MacBook Air. I was very hesitant between 12.9 and 11 inch because of the 200 gram weight difference. And when to remove the keyboard is also a question. If you don't want lying down while watching, that's gonna be too heavy. When it's removed, you have to be so careful because it's unprotected. Back to the keyboard handling, it varies from person to person. One millimeter key distance, same as scissor key, the handling, sound, and size of a key are all between Smart Folio and a MacBook Pro. Put on a good way, you don't feel tired when typing on it. And a bad way, it is just too soft. But the loss of the function case is what disappoints me the most. Adding trackpad is not to touch the screen, but since the F zoom is removed, when adjusting the brightness, voice, play, or pause, I all need to pull out the control center. And the contrary, the $249 Magic Keyboard Folio is added to the function keys. Then look at the trackpad, smooth operating, like scanning on a screen. But force touch is missed compared to MacBook, and it feels a bit hard. Customized gesture is not supported, so I have to readapt the iOS default gestures. There are some other small problems, like easily stand even is black. Overall, it feels a little bit cheap, and not to mention the unchangeable angle and height. Apple Pro Magic Keyboard Test V gives 5.75 as the subjective overall score. Before the Apple had launched that Magic Keyboard, there wasn't a satisfying keyboard for Apple to make. But I discovered this one. The $99 Magic Keyboard from iMac. It's hard to find a second one which has the same handling and thickness. 230 gram thickest part is less than 1cm. Feels weightless when holding it. You can also put it inside your pocket. Light and thin while a good texture of Apple design. Integrated modeling, matte silver panel. The same layout with MacBook Pro. The size of a key is just right. It is not too small to press. The F keys are working well. The distance is not too long. It has a similar keystrokes feeling of MacBook Pro. It is a little bit harder than new Magic Keyboard. It's designed with a certain angle. I also added a holder to lift it up. Although it's not magnetic connection, but to connect the same brand product, there will be no any delay issues. Reactivate it when it's in sleep. It quickly responds in just 2 seconds. Without magnetic connection, the app and keyboard will be separated. That's an obvious flaw, because you can no longer type freely anywhere you want. But it also has a good point, that you can fast place your iPad into different positions by whatever you want. The Apple system directly shows the battery life. I did a rough calculation, with a fully charged, it can last 2 months under mild use. This Magic Keyboard which launched in 2015, during the 4 years of usage, no issues occurred, or being outdated with time. I also tried a virus keyboard which is specifically designed for Apple, but none of them is matched perfectly like this one. Even it doesn't support one-click device switching, but compared to stuck in a certain size, this at least can be a Bluetooth keyboard. iPad, iMac, MacBook, it all compatible with it. System adaptability, the weight, the design are all satisfying. $99, I can't say it's cheap, but compared to $300 Magic Keyboard, there's just a slice of it. Magic Keyboard Test V gives 8.25 as the subjective overall score. I simply assumed trackpad is the thing removed from MacBook, because it has almost the same size. It is also not flat, which is the same with the keyboard, 230 gram. 
a seamless appearance, pure white, good handling, Kipo Plus track pack weighs less than a kilo. It looks natural to put together. The trackpad was designed for iMac, so when I use it for iPad, it is like kind of waste. Place it side by side in a PC way or up and down like a laptop. Since they are separated, that makes it easier to set a holder or display. But the shape or size is not the reason I chose it. Compared to touchscreen, trackpad operation is not that accurate or straightforward. But it is more ridiculous than wandering through fingers and pen tips. As long as you are not holding iPad, then you have to lift out your hand very often. Sometimes it needs to hold still. An iPad mini is fine, but definitely not this big guy. Unlike the trackpad, the touchscreen feels more subtle. Repeated operation is frequently needed. That's not efficient on iPad. But the size is big enough, so there will be enough space for your fingers to move. If you like to connect extra display, then these are very necessary. And this 3D axis trackpad allows me to operate even when lying down. This could be your exclusive remote. But after all, this is designed for Mac, so it is a little big for iPad. I think the one on MacBook Pro 13 inch will be better for iPad Pro. And on Apple OS 16, Trackpad doesn't support a customization, nor those good software on Mac OS, which allows me to customize gestures and shortcut keys. On this, I can only achieve it by using plugins. The additional force touch hasn't been properly utilized in Apple OS. It is more like a larger separated trackpad of a magic keyboard with a better handling. Cooperated with the iPad, it seems there isn't enough room for it to show its capability. There's also something Magic Keyboard good at, like quick response, normally just in seconds. One hour usage a day, only needs one charge a month. $149 price is not low, but still much cheaper than Magic Keyboard for iPad. Pen, keyboard, trackpad, mouse, display, by adding different accessories, you can unlock different status of iPad. With that, it becomes real pro. If you are like me, who will prioritize Apple existence in terms of functional accessories, then a separated trackpad and keyboard might be better. With that, I don't need to worry about a future adaptation, and I can have multiple usage of iPad. It could be turned to a laptop, and return as a tablet anytime. Magic Trackpad on iPad testably gives 7 as the subjective overall score. Test the way, bunny try before you buy.